Born in 1818, Frederick Douglass passes away in 1895. Very quickly, people begin to see the value of honoring his memory and a lifetime of activism. Among those people was Mary Church Terrell, an important educator, thinker, and leader in the Washington, D.C. area. Mary Church Terrell began to hold Douglas Day celebrations as school holidays, a chance to take students outside of class and give them a chance to hear Douglas's own words. But quickly, Douglas Day became so much more, it became performances and parties. And in these spaces, people had a chance to reflect on the problems and the legacies, the questions, and the hopes and dreams of Douglas's time in their own day. And we found Douglas Day celebrations spread quickly. We found celebrations held everywhere from Boston to Pittsburgh, from Iowa to Oregon. And in so many of these places where they got to hear Douglas's words, they also had an opportunity to speak up and against things like the narrowing of civil rights, against Jim Crow, against lynching. But they all had also had a chance to organize, to figure out ways for their children to enjoy better educations, for labor rights, for women's rights, and a whole lot more. And as they celebrated and protested and organized, Douglas Day celebrations began to create their own kinds of communities and their own memorials. In 1907, Booker T. Washington begins to write letters to celebrations of Douglas Day across the country. He was raising funds to make Cedar Hill into a historic site. Cedar Hill was Frederick Douglass's great estate in the Washington, D.C. area. And Booker T. Washington's goal, he said, was to make Cedar Hill into a place to rival, rival Mount Vernon as a seat of the nation's memory. By the 1920s, Carter Woodson, one of the founding figures of African American history, expands from Douglas Day into a history week. And by the 1960s, student activists expand that week into what we know today as Black History Month. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the heart